Okay. So I suggest we start, otherwise we will have too much delay towards the end. Um, so in the following, we will see first the roadmaps of RUN, Core Network, and uh, Mosaic Party. Then we will have a couple of presentations, and I believe then afterwards we have a break, maybe a short one before we go to the demo thesis. To see with the time, and um, yes, then again, the demo visit. So, this will be the afternoon. So, for those who haven't seen me, I'm Robert, I work for the Open Interface Software Alliance. And well, as I already said, the first talk will now be the run roadmap. So, this will be presented by Florian, who I already introduced before. So, he's an uh, associate professor in Euricom and also a board member of the Open Interface Software Alliance. And in this position, I guess, one of the best uh, placed person to actually present the run roadmap or flow source. OK. Thank you. So yeah, I'm happy to present uh, to you the latest um, updates of um, of the run project in, in Open Interface. Um, uh, so despite my my day-to-day -day involvement with this um, um, I don't uh, I don't follow every single merge request so please um, apologies if I if I miss something um, and uh, so I'll, I'm going to present a high level view of the recent additions and the, and the roadmap for for the rest of the year and next year and uh, I'll, I'll happily take questions at the at the end of the presentation so just as a reminder um, we so the RAN project group was was created within the Open Interface Alliance um, a, a few years ago. Um, so originally the alliance didn't do any any development work itself in the in 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 the different um, projects. Uh, now they do. So there there are several um, uh, some of our strategic members who who sponsor explicitly this uh, this development work um, in in the in the RAN. Which you can see on the on the on the left here, and uh, and on the right, uh, I tried to to list all the contributors, um, or at least the recent contributors to the to the RAN project. And again, uh, apologies if I forgot someone. Please do let me know uh, at the end of the talk if I missed someone here. Um, so yeah, the, you you all probably know that we have um, uh, so the open interface RAN has uh, has let's say four different uh, deployment options we support um what four if you count 4g it's 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 maybe it's five uh we support 4g we support 5g non-standalone um so where you have the um 5g uh, a secondary 5g cell um, but it relies on the on the 4g cell and the, the 4g core network um we have 5G standalone, and today basically um, all the uh, focus is on the on the standalone. So initially, that was um, uh, what's marked as phase three was with the, with the Kotsui, and as I will explain to you a little bit later, now the focus has shifted also a little bit on the on the OEI UAE. And there's still this um, this mode called the NOS one mode, although this is used less and less now with uh, with standalone. Um, that allows you to use uh, the, the G node B and the OAI UE without any of the, the core network and the, and the NAS. So it, it basically short circuits some of this um, using uh, direct uh, Linux um, tune interface. All right, so um, you know that you find the full list of features um, in, in our documentation folder. There's this feature list. Um, and but I, I want to highlight uh, a few new features that that came in uh, this year. Um, so one that I'm especially proud of and 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 happy about is the support for two layer downlink MIMO. So this is something that we we never managed to to hundred percent complete in LTE. Um, so now in five G we we have we have that two two layer downlink MIMO. And it actually works pretty well. Um, maybe you've seen the demo yesterday from from our colleagues, all be smart, um, that use the tool there, uh, MIMO to show throughputs of up to eight hundred megabits a second. 
Um, we have support for multiple bandwidth parts, uh, although um, that um, has not yet been integrated with um, with the rest of the of the slicing um, framework. There are still a few parts missing. Um, we have support for 256 QAM on the downlink, um, 50 kilohertz subcarrier spacing on top of the, the 30 and 120 kilohertz that we already have. Um, we also have um, now on the uplink um, support two ports, and, and you'll see in the roadmap later that uh, soon uh, we'll also have uplink MIMO. Um, we have um, uh, support for different TDD configurations. So initially it was the five millisecond uh, TDD configuration. Uh, we can go down to 2.5 milliseconds um, and have different configurations there. Um, what's very recent is support for um, the, the so-called positioning reference signals. Um, so we have several projects that work on, on localization and positioning reference signals are used for, for example, downlink uh, TDOA uh, localization. Uh, for the moment, this is only the the phi and well, a little bit of the of the Mac is there too. Um, but uh, what is not yet in there is is um, the 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 rest of the protocols like NRPPA or LPP uh, that complete the the positioning architecture. Uh, that's that's also on the on the roadmap. Um, we have um, uh, on the on the um, offloading. Um, we we now have uh, so earlier this year we showed um, at Mobile World Congress the LDPC offload so the the Lucaside offload um, using a, a Xilinx T1 card and yesterday um, I, I showed a demo with um, with uh, the Nvidia Aerial which is a complete um, um, inline offloading using the FAT interface. Um, of course, we made several uh, bug fixes and improvements. Uh, link adaptation, multiple UEs. Uh, we worked also on the on the F1 split. I'll say a bit more about that. We have support for SDAP, <clears throat> and uh, and thanks to our partner FireCell, um, we also reactivated the LTM, uh, which was uh, broken for a while, uh, but now it's now it's back. Um, we started um, recently. We started two new projects uh, that I'd like to highlight here. Um, so it's kind of well, let's call them sub projects within the round project group. So as I mentioned, the the OAI UE has been neglected for um, for quite a while. Um, so it, it 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 is we it supports um, a full SA connection with the with the OAI G not B. But it doesn't uh, maintain any any high throughputs, uh, at least not for for a significant amount of time. So we decided to create this new project. There was quite an interest also from from different partners that you see here, who are all contributing um, to bring the the UE up to speed and to actually produce something that uh, that um, you know achieves similar performances as a as a real COTS UE. Yeah, so that supports up to 100 megahertz bandwidth, up to two times two MIMO. Um, and and is stable enough to um, to run for a while, and so that's that's one goal. And um, the two more goals, especially uh, our partner Nokia Bell Labs, they want really to have a, a an open source UE that is compatible with commercial GNOB, uh, especially theirs, uh, but um, in general um, with with any GNOB. So there's there's actually quite a lot of work that needs to be done there. Starting from the synchronization procedure, from the from the cell search, um, from from frequency synchronization, uh, um, uh, AGC uh, handling of SSBs and all of that. Um, so so there's actually quite a bit of work already ongoing. Uh, a few achievements, and uh, by by um, well, I'll show you on the roadmap later. But um, next year we want to really be able to um, put an OAI UE in front of a commercial genome. And last but not least, uh, um, that's uh, especially the, the interest of, of um, power Northeast and especially Northeastern with their Colosseum testbed um, to, to be able to have um, the, the OAI UE integrated in a, in a large scale testbed like, like Colosseum. Yeah, so they, uh, they can't work with commercial UEs because of their, their, uh, their the architecture of the testbed. Um, so the goal is really to have something to, to integrate there and and uh, you know emulate the, a large scale five um, G N R system with uh, with open air. 
There's another project that recently started, um, has different names, L2, L3 hardening or, or productization of, of open air interface. So there's more and more interest, um, more and more startups being created that actually use uh, open air in their commercial products. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it turns out that there are quite some um, uh, problems there if you want to deploy this, uh, starting from, from logging to error handling um, to some features that, that are simply missing, uh, for most of all, handling of, of multiple cells um, that, that, you know, prevent you from actually deploying open interface on a, on a little bit of a larger scale. Um, so we have this... Um, this project, um, mainly supported by Firecell, um, uh, there's also Fraunhofer in there and and um, uh, and Euricom, um, with the goal to to bring this uh, to you know to improve the code and make it more um, robust and, and and harden it for these kind of deployments. Um, I'd like to show you this slide here, um, just to give you an uh, an overview of the performance you can achieve with Open Air today. Um, so this uh, this table um, is uh, is maintained actually by our partner um, all the all the smart. So these are the uh, the, the the throughputs they achieve um, with the with the platforms they showed here. Um, so as I said, you can go. Um, so we support up to 100 megahertz bandwidth um, and up to two layer downlink MIMO, and with that you can go up to eight 820 megabits per second. Um, 820 only when you have two UEs. Yeah, the, the problem there is that um, um, it's it's because of the, the resources uh, for the for the PUCCH, for the feedback. Um, we um, we can only exploit that to the max um, when you have when you have two UEs. Um, for the uplink, um, the, the the throughputs are are here. Uh, you might notice that. Um, for the higher bandwidths, the throughputs are actually not any different than for lower bandwidths. And the reason for that is um, the the LO leakage um, that we have with this uh, with the USAP. Oops. Um, there's a on the, on the receive path, there's quite a strong LO leakage around the DC, um, which prevents us to schedule the whole um, well to schedule the resources over the over the DC because they're they're uh, disturbed. So we basically just schedule half of the bandwidth, um, except for the lower bandwidth cases where, where you can actually uh, tune uh, the, the LO to be at the, at the edge of the spectrum. Uh, there, there we can achieve the, the more or less the full throughput that you can get with this configuration um, in, in TDD. All right. Um, so let me talk about the open interface and, and open run. Um, so Open Interface has made a commitment to to follow our own specifications, and uh, we already have um, um, uh, some support for for different ORAN specifications. Um, so let me well, ORAN or, or let me say Open Run in the in the wide sense. So including the F1 from 3 p and including the uh, SCF uh, FAP, FAP interface. So as I already said this morning. Um, FAPI is actually one of the first interfaces we, we supported. Um, we then, um, we also have now F1, F1, F1 interface, so both F1U, F1C. Um, and uh, we have um, some, some first versions of the, of the E2 interface uh, to the near real-time rig. Um, and uh, on, the, on the front hall side, um, so as you know, uh, Classically, we support um, uh, USRP, so that's using the UHD. If you want, you can see that as a kind of a split eight interface. Um, we also kind of work with uh, with some commercial uh, radio units um, from a company called AW2S, which uses uh, also a split eight, but using ECPRI. And um, as you know, um, we've been working hard on the on the 7.2 interface, native support um, of of ORAN 7.2. Um, so those who followed my present, recent presentations, they know that this has been there for a while. Um, so yes, we're, we're, we're late on this project. We wanted to really show this here. We did make uh, quite some big steps. So the downlink, for example, is working already. We, we validated that. 
um, but we still have issues with the, with the uplink. Um, I believe that um, we can finish this uh, before the end of the year. Uh, we have, we're now in a plug fest um, participating with Viavi, so we have the Viavi testing tools and that's accelerating that um, uh, quite a lot. So the, the goal is really to have um, you know, support for all our use by the end of the year. Um, we're also working on the E1 interface between CUC and CUU, um, which is uh, already partially exists, so I hope to be merged uh, before the end of the year as well. And elephant in the room, as it was called before, the management interface, the O1, um, is um, is planned for for next year. All right. Um, so just very briefly, because Robert, I think, is going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, so E2, um, and in fact, I need to update that slide because yesterday I learned there's even a third uh, example. Um, so um, we have um, uh, today there are, there are three different um, um, examples of the E2 integration. And uh, we'll we'll all uh, eventually merge them into into one. So today you have the the, the flex rig from Mosaic 5G. Um, you have the rig from uh, from ONF, the micro um, uh, rig. And as I learned yesterday, there's um, also support for the for the rig from from OSC. Um, my colleague Adlen is going to talk about the the project here on the left uh, this afternoon. Um, and um, uh, Robert is going to talk about uh, the FlexRig and, and Mosaic 5G in general uh, just after me. Um, so I'm not going to, yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to mention, I uh, already mentioned that um, there's more and more interest in open interface and in you, for use for commercial products. Um, so I just wanted to mention a few projects here. So you can already find the open interface as part of Magma, as part of ONF. Um, there are a few companies, um, most of them startups, that, that, that start using um, our code in, in their products. And um, there are several projects that are actually dedicated to, to um, you know, make open air interface um, more, more robust and, and more, more deployable. Um, so I just list, listed two, two here. All right, so now for the, for the roadmap um, for next year. Um, so here on the top, these are all uh, features that, um, that are currently, um, being, uh, integrated. Um, so I mentioned already the MIMO, the frontal, um, NVIDIA aerial, uh, you saw yesterday is being integrated. Um, yeah, one other project that we kind of laid on is the FR2 interoperability testing. Um, so we, we have had a basic uh, FR2 support for, for a while. But we haven't actually managed to get it to work with a with a commercial um, uh, UE. Um, it's not uh, the project is still ongoing. It's just uh, taking much longer than expected. The debugging is is notoriously hard um, for for this um, for this kind of deployment. But again, I'll um, I'll hope to finish to be able to finish this before the end of the year. Um, Yes, support for non-terrestrial networks. So there's, there was excellent work that was done by, by some of our partners, Fraunhofer, University of Luxembourg, and, and others. So they have actually shown um, a, a live demo of open interface over um, uh, a, a geostationary satellite. Um, so the first time that uh, open interface was, was up in space. Um, it was quite an impressive demo. Um, and and they're, they're merging their, their things back to develop now, now bit by bit. So that's that's hopefully also being um, uh, finished before the end of the year. Um, Robert is going to talk about the ORAN E2 service models. Um, so all of that is, is work that is already um, in, in the final stages here. Now for next year, um, of course, we're going to continue on the FR2. So um, we want to really um, work on the, on the beamforming support. Also, um, this is falling together with the with the ORAN 7.2 work. So today, most of the ORUs are category A. So um, without pre-coding or, or beamforming support, uh, but uh, we're already starting to see the first category B um, RUs that support beamforming. 
Um, so, of course, then we need to work on the beamforming procedures in the OAI as well to be able to support this. Um, as I said, multiple cells per DU, um, that's, that's kind of important for deployments, NRPPA for localization, and um, I mentioned the UE project, so uh, that's the goal for the first quarter next year that we have OAI UE interoperable with the commercial um, GLB. Um, then later that year, we're going to also work on the on um, having multiple DUs per CU, you know, so that will give you flexibility on your deployment. So you can have multi cells either you can have one DU that supports multiple cells, or you can have multiple DUs that each support one cell. Um, and then we'll we'll have to have handover between the between the uh, DUs. Um, quality aware scheduler that's important for for slicing and and also other things like like time sensitive networking, um, which um, which will also which is also um, treated in some projects. Um, and uh, yeah, later this year Q3 um, approximately um, um, we want to have the the complete interoperability of the of the OER UE with the GNOD, so so including a significant amount of traffic, sustainable traffic. Um, we're going to extend the the, the E2 um, uh, service models to the run control. Um, we also want to continuously bring down uh, the the latency of of OEI. So today, um, the the latency, the best we can achieve with the short TTIs, with the short uh, TDD configs, is five milliseconds. But we want to we want to bring that down to two. And there's also a project on integrated access access and backhaul that's planned for next year. Um, and this is new. We also tried to put some performance targets um, on on OAI. So this is, um, um, yeah, um, let's say the target. Okay. So so we'll we'll see how this goes. So today uh, we already support 800 megabits per second. Uh, we have to improve a bit on the number of UEs. And um, as I said, that we also want to bring down the the round trip delay from today five milliseconds uh, down to two milliseconds. Yeah. A number of UEs that we want to support eventually 64 and the throughput we also want to double uh, so that's the you saw that um, we will have the, the four layer so if we if we support the four layer MIMO that's that's the throughput we'll be able to support all right thank you we have time for two good questions yeah very good <laughs> I can just shout it out on your performance chart. Yes. Uh, so when you do the multi UE at the rather larger scale, do you do that with um, real UEs over the air, or, or, or are you doing well? Multi -UE? That, that's challenging. Yes, that's absolutely challenging. So there are multiple options. Uh, so yes, with COT series, we won't be able to do sixty four. Um, we have a, a commercial uh, tester, the, the Amarisoft UE tester. Um, I'm not quite sure if it can do sixty four, but it can do a, a large number of UEs. And then yes, of course, there's there's um, the soft UE and and uh, yeah, that 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 uh, that is a, a scenario for which the Colosseum test, but is definitely a good uh, a good target. Um, the, there's definitely some work to do in the scheduler, but I think the the main limitation today is is in the probably in the RSC in the in the handling of of uh, a large number of users in the in the RSC. Um, it it uh, it was not designed initially for for that, um, and I think as as long as you limit the the scheduling per um, per slot to to uh, two, three, or maximum four UEs, the scheduler should not have such a big problem. Uh, it's it's more on the on the upper layers that there are issues. Maybe one last one. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, I have a 
that puts that package in your um, feature chart. Mm -hmm. and that, that's a naked you support that you're getting package by. So yes, yes, um, I should have put it on the roadmap too. Yes, uh, there is, um, um, we, we should upgrade the, the FAP interface. So today I think we're using version two. Um, well, uh, ex with, with some, we, we kind of backported some of the fixes that were done in later releases uh, to that, but we didn't, uh, we didn't upgrade the full um, FAP interface. But uh, yes, thanks for the comment. We, that's definitely um, a good, uh, another motivation to upgrade the FAP as well. Thank you, Florian. <laughs>